There was a lot of excitement when the Imbrave data first came out that maybe this was kind of the panacea and, you know, we, we have a new general uh, strategy moving forward. And I, I would say that certainly there are there's some signal that that's probably helpful, but certainly we have to consider uh, that it's not necessarily as simple as that. So, so I think that, um, you know, there have been multiple failed approaches, including cabozantinib plus atezolizumab and then lenvatinib plus pembro. Uh, pembrolizumab. And so, you know, certainly that that kind of tempers our enthusiasm to kind of apply this very broadly. Uh, and then some of the mechanisms by which, um, uh, you know, so, or at least some of the rationale for why there, there is not always benefit when you add uh, these two pathways together to inhibit them um, is the fact that there might be synergistic toxicity that might limit the amount of dose you can give. So uh, there's a nice preclinical study from, uh, I believe, Mass General and Hopkins showing that um, sometimes inhibition of the kinases by the TKI component, um, in addition to inhibiting pathological angiogenesis, can also cause toxicity in the liver mediated by various immune components, including NK cells, natural killer cells. And so that might limit the amount of dose we can give uh, to humans. Again, this is a preclinical study. It's a preprint still, but I think it's a very interesting, um, uh, at least stab at, at, at why this is, because there are many theoretical reasons why inhibition of angiogenesis can quote unquote, normalize the tumor microenvironment to make it more uh, theoretically susceptible to checkpoint inhibition, but it just hasn't panned out clinically.